Look at that, it looks like the straw is like right here. It's not, it's like further forward, but it's perspective right there, isn't it? That's like, that's weird. You know things when they're nearer, they appear bigger or smaller? I don't know, is it bigger or smaller? I don't know. Um, but you know, you remember that scene in like uh, Toy Story, where like uh, the, the dinosaur is like in the background, like running after them. It's like things may appear smaller than they actually seem. And it's like a spoof of Jurassic Park when they're right, when they're like trying to get away from that T-Rex and they're looking in the mirror. Yeah, that's basically what's going on with this straw right now. And this is random. This is so random. This is vlog 11. No, it's not. Every time I do a podcast, I find a way of saying vlog whatever. No, this is podcast 11. Roll the intro. I just want to dance. First of all guys, welcome back to another podcast with me, your host Lose21. Remember it is Lose21 fans for life. If you're part of this, you're part of this for life. All 83 of you. That's a lot of people. Um, and so welcome to all of you. Um, good morning, good evening, good day, good night, whatever time you are watching this or tuning in. Um, yes. So no more of these podcasts are on SoundCloud. I might end up going back to it at some point. I always go back on my words. Like when I said I'd make short vlogs, start making like 20 minute vlogs. But I tell you what, this week has been amazing with the, the new Spurs stadium that I got to see at last. Yeah, there were rumours it was going to be called the Nike Stadium. But no, anyway, so it was Spurs Legends against Inter Milan Forever. Um, all the best players over the years, past years of both teams, ex players. Um, you know. I'll give you a list. So for Inter, there was like Laurent Blanc, Caragunis, Varane, loads of other legends, uh, Zanetti, um, Julio Cesar and goal. Um, some of them I didn't know, but my dad knew all of them, being a die-hard Inter Milan fan. But of course, he's a Spurs fan like me too. I'm a Spurs fan. He, he's cheering on Inter Milan, but of course I'm cheering on Spurs. Well, he's, he was cheering on both, to be honest. Um, but the new stadium so this was the game and rumours were that Gascoigne was going to be there and he was for Spurs uh, he didn't play very long could barely run poor guy um, with players like David Ginola Berbatov Robbie Keane Chimbonda Basson Anderton uh, some of the, some of these before my time but of course when I was a kid Robbie Keane Berbatov th those players I remember really well Robbie Keane was a great great talent Scored a really great goal in his friendly, which sadly we lost 5-4 in the end, but it was like literally chipped the keeper. And everyone was just looking around in shock, like, he still got it. Well, not in shock, but he still got it. I mean, he hasn't long since retired. Uh, I think it was in MLS. Yeah, no, he was. Um, yeah, he's recently retired anyway. So it's just amazing to see all these ex-players back. Gascoigne, you know, the legend. Um... Yeah, he couldn't run. He couldn't run anywhere. He's gonna have a heart attack, poor fella. Uh, Ginola recently had a heart bypass or something, so he took it slow as well. Of course, weren't as fit as the Inter Milan players. I mean, Javier Zanetti, like he doesn't age ever. Like he played into his forties at Inter somehow. I don't know. It, it seems that any either Milan club they seem to extend the life of all their players on the pitch. They play for long past uh, the time they should be or the age they should be playing but age is just a number as I saw in his friendly because there's a lot of goals for mo most of these players being retired still going for it <laughs> typical um, thinking they're young though innit and then oh no I can't do that no I'm trying to like Ginola was trying to chest it and then volley it but he just fell on his ass. Um but it was just his new stadium New stadium was amazing. I haven't seen anything like it. On the main stand, there's like seven floors. Where I am, it's like the fourth floor. But I say the fourth floor, but it's still a great view, and it's still quite close to the pitch. Considering, obviously, you're high up. Like I'm kind of underneath, like the is it second or third tier? I don't know. There's loads of levels anyway, and they've got the world's longest bar, the Europe's longest bar, 62 or 63 meters or something. I didn't see that level, that's on the first floor. 
like where where it's a bit more there's a bit more space as you go up obviously there's less space kind of still still pubs i mean like bars on every level where you can get beer but they ran out of beer so we're drinking cider but um of course that's the first game mishap in it and this game is like a test to see how the stadium works obviously it was nowhere near full capacity but it was just a tester event really like 40,000 maybe but the atmosphere was still amazing considering and it'll be great for other other sports events I hear even there might be Anthony Joshua fight in the future or a boxing match in general that might be held there that'd be amazing too crazy uh, or rugby NFL definitely NFL gonna gonna be a big part of it because they do have a rotating pitch that rotates to an NFL pitch and to like a concert like uh, floor so there'll be music there too and for music it'll be great it's like an amphitheatre you know stadiums echo nicely all the time um, I, I mean it wasn't even full and all the crowd were like felt like there was more of them than there was even at, at half capacity not even, I don't know what the, the, it was like 80,000 or something more than that the full capacity anyway we will see at the Palace game how full it is and of course eventually the City games I'm at some, I'm at some of them uh, obviously the home leg of the Champions League and obviously the league game hopefully and Palace tomorrow I'm getting a, a lift there from my mates and my cars in the shop so shout out to Ryan um, and Mark for driving us um, so yeah um, that's going to be fun my dad's going to try and finish early always difficult I mean even on Saturday going to this Spurs game like same thing the car was in the shop so we got I got a cab so it picked me up from home then my dad phones goes pick me up from the shop it's on the way there so I gave the cab driver the address goes to the shop picks up my dad and then we go and yeah everything's fine you got the tickets yeah yeah I got the tickets hold on I haven't actually got the tickets and literally we're like in the middle we're going mad in the cab and like turn around please can you take us back home to pick up the tickets forgot the tickets luckily my brother was at home um, he just gave them to us and that's it but still like how can you forget the tickets such an idiot but um, probably because like for the actual Premier League games the my season ticket games it's like a, a card I just swipe when I go in no tickets it's, it's all electronic but this game there was tickets like actual physical tickets but I kind of got confused thinking that it was on this card as well and no it wasn't it was on the ticket you need the tickets for god's sake but my brother even asked me as I left you got the tickets do you need the ticket I was like no no it's on this card so when I, so then like when my dad asked me you got the tickets that's what I assumed he meant and then we, we worked out in the end and then we weren't that far from home but I was just so annoyed with myself luckily we weren't that late either I mean if I'm doing that on the, on the, on the bigger game then we're missing the kickoff but we didn't, we got there early enough. Um, but I really want to get a tour of the stadium for real to see every detail, every aspect. Like, I mean, next time I have time to explore, but you go to watch a game, then you have time to explore. But saying that, we did after go into the like the Spurs gift shop, like, well, more than a gift shop, innit? They've got jerseys everywhere and like merchandise, memorabilia, even some NFL memorabilia as well. I guess that means they're going to be showing NFL hosting NFL um, I heard Wembley is very good for that but yeah the main difference is like the distance like you travel from you get out, when you get out of your car to when you get to your seat and so let me give you a rundown basically so like I said you, you, you know you go in and there's like turnstiles or whatever obviously I go through the disabled entrance then there's loads of lifts like quite spacious lifts compared to Wembley. Wembley is only like one or two lifts on that side of the pitch of the stadium anyway. But here there's like four or five in each bit and then like it takes it took us directly up to the f fourth floor where we were and then literally you go through a door and you walk down this corridor where like on one side you got all glass and you can see like the, the whole of like Tottenham and North London kind of like the view. It's like a skyline view. And you go through there, you go through another door, 
when you're in the bar area, then well, this, this is from my seat anyway on the fourth floor. Then obviously you, normal stadium like you go through like you go through a corridor and then you're like you're in the stadium literally like at your seat. But here there's like doors and then like a steward will open the door and let you in and then there you are at your seat. It's a bit different. It's like the bar area is like indoors and then you go to the seat and it's outdoors. For me it's like quite a good seat. There's not too much wind where I am either. So at Wembley I was right on the corner and there's like wind coming from both directions. So I always got a chill there. But here though like, with blocks from the wind is like just under the kind of the the stand above. So you're covered as well if it rains. Uh, obviously lower down it won't be the, the same. So yeah. Just pretty simple really. Wembley's a bit more wider and a bit more open but I guess being on the fourth floor that's why it's a bit more tight. But the view is just something different like don't get that out of the stadiums that kind of to be that high up. But it didn't feel that bad once you were in there. Uh, of course they've got screens in each corner, huge screens as, as any stadium but um, they're pretty good. Um, I must admit the uh, advertising boards they kind of dazzle you, they're a bit bright. It's got, ah my eyes! Because <laughs> like, like it just flashes every now and then like with a new advert and it's like ah! can't even see. It's like illuminating the whole stadium and then of course you've got the Spurs fans singing as we always do echoing lovely in that stadium uh, so just great atmosphere at such a small game of course everyone was anticipating Gaza on the pitch obviously he's not where he used to be none of these players are but I tell you what Laurent Blanc hasn't lost lost his talent Veron was still at it <laughs> still good United flop nonetheless but like Berbatov we were arguing like is Berbatov a Spurs legend because he did betray us and kind of go to United but for me, he is like respect to him. Legends, <laughs> Count Dracula, Robbie Keane, of course. When he scored, he did his back, flip, his front flip, back flip. I don't know. Like I didn't think he could still do that. I mean, maybe not in a few years, but <laughs> while, while while he can, he might as well. One of the dodgy celebrations, like um, yeah. I mean, there's there's. There were so many legends and so many goals to see, so I was glad. But Wednesday, tomorrow is Palace. I'm gonna head down there early, hopefully. But yeah, sorry if you're watching this podcast waiting for me to talk about something else because you hate football. Because there is some of you, you maybe not hate it, but just don't watch it. Um, but yeah, not for me. I got my season ticket. I'm enjoying this new stadium, and they got this weird thing like where you like the glasses for the, the cups for the beer like they fill up from underneath and there's a little like mechanism underneath where you, they put it on top of like a nozzle where the beer comes out and it opens up the bottom of the glass and like fills up from underneath I don't know how that works and then so I guess, I guess you can be holding your glass someone can just come along and poke the bottom of it and then you've got beer all over you it's quite funny really I'm yet to actually see it because they ran out of beer like I said but it's like this weird mechanism on the glass or a message. Oh my god. There we go. Um, yeah, it's just one of them things. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's a must see. Like, I think even rival team fans are saying to me it's like amazing. And it is. I just can't believe we finally, finally got there. It's been a long time, long time coming. <laughs> Not to quote Machine Gun Kelly there, but yeah. It's been a long time coming, indeed been waiting too long and we're supposed to be beginning of the season of course you know what I mean like mid season is like a bit weird but here we are here we are yeah it's a bit difficult to be doing a podcast and juggle juggling that and whatsapp conversations but yeah anywho that has been just the main thing of this weekend of course Sunday was Mother's Day a lot went on on, Mo on Sunday that I wasn't happy about um, well Saturday of course Charles Leclerc did qualify first and became the second youngest ever driver to do that and that was amazing but of course Sunday started off as a, as a Ferrari 1-2 um, and then it didn't end that way at all because of reliability issues on both cars 
Vettel literally got overtaken by Hamilton and whether it was nerves or his tyres or both he spun out at that point got back on the track then his front bumper decides to disintegrate and like fold on itself under his car and I've seen that happen before and cars have like gone in the air and flipped and stuff which you don't see very often in F1 anymore because of all the safety procedures uh, but yeah so he broke that and then uh, he had to go pit fix the car get a new front wing but yeah he, he was like way off where he was he was second gone down to like he went down to like eighth but I think he made it up to about fifth or sixth and of course then came the news from Leclerc that his electrics had gone on the car this wasn't feeding the power to the engine of course the engine was working but like without all the electrical stuff it's like without a battery in your car it's not going to work and it was going really really slow like a good 20k slower than everyone else kilometers or I think they're measuring kilometers yeah and so Hamilton was just bearing down on him and of course he caught him of course nothing the clerk could do and he knew it and you could see the frustration and everything and the tension you could hear it uh, just nothing you can do in that situation I mean he was so fast though it was like a little more than 10 seconds clear fastest lap he had to um, and then of course yeah the lucky thing happened on the last few laps where both Renaults like went off the track and had to be salvaged so in that time they brought the safety car out and no n no other drivers actually overtook Leclerc in the end of course Bottas had already overtaken him and made him third but if not for that safety car Max Verstappen in fourth would have caught him and overtaken him as well so he's still got a podium and to be so young and be on that podium and know that you could have got that much further could have got first and be frustrated with third that's amazing like well yeah of course third is good anyway but he wanted to win he was in the situation of winning in the position to win and that was the only thing that could have happened the only thing that could have happened did happen and we've seen it with not so often but with the Mercedes once or twice in the past but maybe in relation to tyres and we've seen it with Red Bull in, the, in previous seasons and of course lower teams with less money <laughs> it's typical F1 you know when you're in a great position if you're not making a mistake your car might and you can just see all the pick we just the Ferrari pick we just destroy and me as a fan just screaming at the TV and there's just nothing you could do and of course at the same time Spurs were playing so as that ends I change over to the Spurs game let me guess we're losing 1-0 yes we are we're losing 1-0 so I'm watching that and I'm even more angry seething and I'll get on onto why I was angry even before the F1 uh, but even before that but I'll get onto that in a minute but this was supposed to be Mother's Day remember so yeah and then we watch poor mum got to watch all this sports <laughs> you're sitting there like what the hell can't watch a film you know um, <laughs> so yeah and football Spurs get one back it's 1-1 then the worst own goal I've ever seen some people blame Lloris or a lot of people blame Lloris or Udo Ard's own goal but really Lloris you got to catch it or clear your danger quicker than that and that was the end of that because everyone's rooting for Liverpool because nobody wants City to win the only team that might I know it's weird but United United might want City to win because they hate Liverpool and Liverpool might you know, are closest to them on trophies in that trophy cabinet, so and City have quite a few less which is weird, I don't know why they would support them, but yeah they'd rather them than Liverpool probably but everyone else would have wanted Spurs to lose their game, and we did so we've done, we done everyone else proud, not ourselves nah but yeah, that, that wasn't fair bit unfair, I mean, we got back in it and then we messed it up ourselves it was either going to be us or them to mess up at this point because it's that time of the season, isn't it? Rather Liverpool, you know, do the, the Gerrard slip kind of thing and lose the title race. Or Spurs just slip up. And, of course, that happened. And then Arsenal won to make it worse. Newcastle couldn't have helped us out. But, yeah, that's football. And then, in the evening, later on, I was watching Inter Milan, Lazio. 
Inter Milan lost as well, just 1 0. Just fire Spalletti, please. Just get rid of the guy. And of course, yeah, so all my, all my teams lost. Of course, it's Mother's Day of all days. And before that, I'd been at Hatfield playing Pouch of Football in the uh, regional tournament. Uh, it's like a local tournament for Southwest. South, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Local teams, basically. Local ish teams. Um, so we had Brighton, then we had Norwich. And Brighton, we lost 2 1 to last time. And that was the game where I played in goal and, like, was crazy and, and amazing at the same time. I'm told. Well, well I, was, I, was, I was good, I was told. Well, we lost 2 1, but I, I, I didn't give up after I conceded early and it was my fault and we fought back and then yeah of course they're a Premier League side and the, the Premier League sides you know they do what they do against the Championship side they're gonna hit another gear basically well they didn't really do that it was a really close game considering so for them it's like okay maybe we should have done better because if you're a Premier League team that's puts you under a bit of pressure to have a close game with a lower team but we've seen big teams struggle. I mean, yeah, they're they're they're, they're about in the Premier League. Uh, I've known them for years. Been playing against them for years. Uh, other uh, my other team, but of course that was a different situation because we were like title contenders and we're like trying to beat this team that's a bit lower than us in the league. But now it's different, and of course in regionals it changes everything. It's different. I don't know. Like lower teams can beat bigger teams and stuff. It can be a few surprises. So then in the second game, Norwich. And uh, Norwich, a team we, we, we have close games against all the time. It's fun playing them, actually, I'll be honest. And, yeah, it was only... We ended 1-0 in the end. And it was, of course, a corner. And then the far post, and then in at the far post. And I'm on the near post, and... If my teammate doesn't get there, one, I've got to get there, but... It's getting across, because... If they shoot at the near post, and you've moved to your far post, then you look like a right mug. So yeah, you can see it happening, and you see it. And I saw it going on, you know. After that, I was like, okay. And then you think back, like I shouldn't have give away the corner. We shouldn't have been so defensive, blah blah blah. And you think of all these things, but you just got to get on with it. And me as an older player in the team, I'm just trying to forget about my own worries of that. Like, well, it wasn't really my. It wasn't a. It was a great goal to have scored for them. It wasn't really a great goal to concede, like. But it's one of them you can't do anything about. It's not like a silly mistake, it's like a, a well-worked goal with a good finish. If you, if you don't finish it, that's it. You ain't going to score. I mean, I was doing my job at the back pretty much, even though we, we lost both. I mean, I was doing the best I could. It's just if you don't score, eventually you're going to concede. If you, you, get, you get drawn back into your own half and you lose a bit of, uh, like, momentum. If you score, you gain momentum and you get forward about half a yard everything's half a yard half a yard quicker but when it's nil nil it's just a bit more whichever way it can go you, know, you don't know which way it's going to go um, but had we got a goal first we would have gone on the win one probably I don't know it would have been 1-1 or something because it was in the league previously but we have to play them on the last weekend of the nationals the championship that is in Nottingham and if we we win that we get our third place back and we get in a playoff to get promoted if we lose that then we don't get promoted so we have to beat them because they're the team above us not by many points so bear in mind but second is pretty much unattainable first is long gone Manchester our favourite team to play against <laughs> not well it was fun the last time I mean, we lost but yeah we gave it our all and we didn't make any silly mistakes and lose 4 1 like the time before. But anyway, so Norwich is a team we have to beat in the Championship. And I thought if we beat them in regionals, it, it, in our minds, it's better. Because then we, we'll be like, okay, we'll beat them again. But it's never that simple. And so now they'll have a bit more confidence going into that. And we need to fight that with our own confidence. As long as we win the other games, that'll give us a bit of forward momentum. But that is a lot of sports to take in, guys. And uh, feel for you if you're not a fan of sports, but yeah, Pouch of Football. Strong. We're a strong team, but um, yeah. 
been a long season. Last season as well. Even last season before we get promoted. Um, but yeah, here we are. Trying to do it again. Hopefully back where I belong in the Premier League. Where we all belong, really. Because the number of times we've been up and down. In, in the divisions. But Premier League is where you want to be. A lot more difficult, but it's how you're going to learn. And I tell you what, me being in the Premier League. Coming down to the Championship. Obviously, obviously at first I was a bit like upset, I'd be like complacent and like oh, I was going to be easy but I realised it's just as difficult you know no dis disrespect to anyone, it's just as difficult really, it's not easy at all uh, but my experience in the Premier League with a top team um, made me realise and emphasised like the importance of little things like you know getting your set pieces right, defending right you know thinking of new ideas to get past your opponents not just doing what's obvious and the same thing again and again and the necessity of scoring and taking the lead before the other team do or do, and then defending your lead once you have it and scoring a, a lot more goals because the trouble was at my ex-team that in, in some of the title winning seasons the goal we struggled on the goal difference but we won it on points most times but the goal difference was lower than the, sec the team in second for example some years we had a lower goal difference and even now we don't score that many but when we score we tend to win the game we don't score like 5-6 all the time we did a few times at the last nationals but not, not often compared to the teams around us and I realise that now that it's more important than ever in a championship because there's more literally there's more battles in each game there's a lot, lot of close games um, whereas in the championship in the premiership there was a gulf between top teams and the rest of the league um, but yeah no, it was, it's not any easier and I've learned the importance of getting everything right if not more in, a low, in the championship a lower division if you want to get promoted and you want to beat the teams around you and the bigger teams but we are I say we are a big team we've got a lot of players too when we're at full full team strength, we're pretty much unstoppable. Um, on the good day, everyone has their bad days, but you can't have eight players who are having a bad day. You know, you got four on the pitch, and we've got that many subs. On a good day, so that is something to 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 remember um, for us. That I mean, as a player as well, you think, okay, if I don't do well enough, I'm getting subbed here, and someone else is going to come on, score, and that's it. Like within the team there's a bit of rivalry of who scores the most I mean for me I've been playing the goal a fair few games this season so I'm kind of off that list but when I'm up front I score I do score a few so scored more in this team like, than my previous team and especially last year but like I said this year I've been taking responsibility in goal a bit of the time when our main keeper hasn't been there or when we've changed up the style a bit to have more like attacking the approach from the goalkeeper like going up for set pieces sometimes for that extra player like I mean the top teams literally do four out and have like a rush goalkeeper it's amazing to see and it's difficult to play against impossible almost annoying so and in championship people don't do it as much premiership maybe two or three teams do it and do it well my ex team being one of them uh, it just overwhelms you as a player um, but yeah, there's always different tactics you can use. And that's one of the newer ones. But then every now and then I just watch the where the French play, it's just so simple. They make it so easy. Things that you wouldn't think of here. Because they are one of the best at it. They've got a lot of good players. Um, but yeah, I mean, the enjoyment is always there. I mean, we lost. And I was annoyed that day, like I said. So going back to that day, to Sunday, it was a Mother's Day, wasn't it? And I've lost. Ferrari's lost, Spurs has lost, Inter Milan have lost, everyone's lost. So I was not happy. But what can you do? You get over it, it's football, it's sports, whatever, you know. No one got hurt. <laughs> well, few, maybe some of the football players, maybe. But no one actually got hurt, so yeah. It's not that bad, really, is it? Yeah, it's not. Alright, I think I'm changing it up a bit. Enough, enough sports, guys. This is podcast 11 anyway, and 
hopefully I'm going to be doing a lot more of them more than more than rather than later you know wait I want to do more rather than I don't know I want to do more podcasts basically more often is what I'm trying to say got there in the end oh god never getting my words out in the right way um, but anyway guys I've got my podcast up and running again happy to see all you guys those of you who are new too welcome to the 21 fam for life you're in you can't get out unless you die <laughs> no well yeah for life yeah you know, you know what I mean um, anyway let me read this um, horoscope I've got here from, from t- it's my, my Virgo horoscope from today yes this is weird I did do a video on this in the past don't know why I wasted that much time of anyone's lives doing that Anyway, this uh, for this uh, horoscope, the first bit kind of makes more sense. After that, I kind of lose track of what they're talking about. But yeah, so here we go. You may keep having the same thoughts over and over again in your head. I do, I do. Virgo, each day you may work out a different scenario for the way it comes to an end. You know that you will get to the critical decision at some point in your life. So why not experiment with all the solutions right now? Stay calm and turn to others when you get into a blind into a bind along the way. Yeah. So the first line of course the only bit I'm really connected to here. Like I, I do have the same thoughts over again in my head. Like, do I need to get a job? Will I make enough money off YouTube? Am I? At, you know, at the moment I'm not make enough money but um, it's always a thought like this reoccurring thought like am I wasting my time or not yeah I enjoy what I'm doing but I still feel like you know you see other people with normal jobs and I'm like do I need to do that I mean credit to anyone who's working hard on something and not reaping the rewards straight away me basically um, it's it's what I'm going through but like I have that thought every day at some point some sort of guilt that like I'm wasting my time but I'm not I know I'm not but everyone has their own thoughts like that you know you always want to do better it's human nature but you know um, you've got to think think positively and you know you, you're all we're all just one individual person like everyone assumes the whole world is thinking about them like everything revolves around them but it doesn't it really doesn't and like when something bad happens to you, you think everyone else needs to know about it or, or you need to tell everyone in some way but you don't um, or when you do something good you don't need to tell anyone you shouldn't do it for the purpose of telling someone else or other people, oh he's a good person no. you should do it because in your heart you want to do something good for example um, so that that's basically what I've got from this this kind of today's horoscope for me whether it makes any sense, the rest of it I don't know um, but yeah, I am asking the same questions every day, same thoughts over and over again. What else? You know, what else do I need to do? I need to be doing this better or this? It's just typical. Not of me, but of everyone. To have a bit of doubt, whatever you're doing. You know, I could go out there and get a job and then have doubt in that. Like I'm still looking for jobs every now and then. Um, but it's just, it's a, it's a tough game, and I've done it for a long time in the past. It's just. It's nothing new to me. It's just how it is. Like you, you know. I'm looking. I would be looking for a job in journalism, of course. Journalism, media, that kind of area. But there's so many other passions. I, I mean, I love music as well. And speaking of music, um, I was just recently watching a documentary about um, Dr. Dre and one of his like colleagues, or not colleagues, but like. A guy in the music business called uh, Jimmy Irvine, I think. Is it Jimmy Irvine? Anyway, he's he's done a lot with Dre, and he helped him with the. He was involved with the with the the Dre beat deal, the Apple Dre beat deal, um, that made Dre a lot of billions, a couple of billion, it was a multi-billion dollar deal, and Jimmy Irvine was his like partner in it, I think. Um, but anyway, he's like a he start Jimmy Irvine started off as like a 
an engineer, like a, like in the recording studio, basically. And from there, he's became this really successful person. And but one thing they both had in common, him and Dr. Dre, is the ear for music and the passion for music, because it starts as something you like before it comes a career or something you do on a daily basis. And it's just interesting to see the growth over time. And of course, if you're a fan of hip hop, you know Dr. Dre. If you're not, you probably still know him because of Dre beats. People, yeah, but it's one of them situations and still makes money today, which is not easy in the industry. But yeah, I mean, me, I've got a huge passion for music. Um, it, it seems like, I've, I don't know, I don't know what, what other people say, but personally, I think I've got a good ear for music. I've been told this by a few people. Um, yeah, I mean, think, think about the jobs you can get into with that. I couldn't sing though. I've got a good ear for music, which means like what, something in music production is possible, like, in the future, or so th those kind of jobs too stand out to me. But you need experience. They always look for experience. That how can you have experience if you're not experience? You're getting this job to have experience in that field. You know what I mean? But obviously, back in in the day, like for Jimmy Irvine especially, it was it was easier. Like you just worked in that recording studio as an engineer, and from there. From there, he worked with so many artists, from Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, Stevie Nicks, Patti Smith. The list goes on and on. So yeah, Dr. Dre, Jimmy Irvine, um, popular in the, and fame, very famous and successful in the industry. It's what they do. It's their lives. I mean, I, I did. I have said in the past that I reckon I could. I could be a music producer because I've got a good ear. Everyone thinks they've got a good ear for music. Everyone thinks they're a good singer. Well, some people do and then they're really not. But um, Dre, for example, he, he, he says he can't rap to this day. He just can produce some amazing songs that you probably know one of them at least. Obviously, if you're a hip hop fan, it's different. It's like, yeah, it's how, it's how hip hop started, really, rap and all that kind of NWA, <laughs> uh, Ice Cube, Eazy-E, all them guys, um, yeah, it's just, it's just music in it, uh, and sounds, and the the way you, you, you hear them, and then words on top of it, so, so even, even for me, like, in the future, this kind of job, that kind of thing, good ear for music I've got, um, but yeah, we will see what the future will bring. For now, it's just podcasts and YouTube. Uh, like I said, I'm still looking for jobs here and there. Um, but I remember when I was first out of uni and first looking for jobs, even at, during uni, last few years, it was stressful. It was annoying. Like you go for a whole day and then time would pass, get the emails about, oh no, you're not quite what we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. We, the position is already filled. I've heard it a lot and it's just so generic and like, robotic way of answering and half the time it is a robot answering your questions your emails and they're like do not reply blah 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 but sometimes it is who you know rather than what you know of course you need to know your stuff you need to have some sort of perseverance or intelligence to get on in the social media world or anything like anything that that you know um, social media YouTube music producing things like that where it involves fans and other people that are consuming that you've got to think of them in some way and for artists it becomes difficult when they're perceived a certain way to be a certain way and to make songs in a certain way and certain types of songs and dress a certain way um, when a person changes that because everyone changes over time with age um, and they learn and we get better as people. Um, so it's difficult for musicians when they suddenly they, they change as they get older because not all their fans want them to change. They just see them in, in the way they first knew them and that's it. Uh, like Speaking of music, I, mean, I was watching the Lady Gaga documentary just out of interest because 
the success she's had with Star is Born, of course, we knew her for many years, from at least 10 years ago, with her original, like, music and the way of dressing and the persona she portrayed through the music. Um, I wasn't a fan back then, I, I despised the back, I despised the type of music back then, it was, like, annoying. Um, and then, when you're younger, you don't appreciate the work people put into what they do. I, I didn't understand it back then. 10 years ago, what, 15 year old me? What an idiot that kid was. If I could go by, I'd just slap that kid so hard and say, get a grip, learn some manners. <laughs> um, but no, so for her career, that was like, there were the, the big moments and people think that, that after that, that's it. So then she made a new album two years ago, which is what the documentary was based on. Her album called Joanne or something. And it's an insight into that and how there's a media storm, like, they were confused at what type of Lady Gaga this was. She wasn't dressing up in the same way, and the music was a bit different. She was saying, I've changed, you know, my fans have to change too. And some hardcore fans do, and some some don't. It's not easy. And she felt it, and there was a lot of depression and anxiety in the past, stress from the past, that was still affecting her. So yeah, music, it's a tough industry, and you, you get perceived a certain way. After being a certain way, you would, some people expect that. They expect it to always be like that, but no. Ten years is a long time, and like, ten years from her first albums, and the first bits of music, and now she's, you know, in this film Star is Born, and then from there just go, career, you know, re rebirth in some way, Re reborn as a career. Not that, I'm not saying she ever lost it, but um, because her newer stuff I kind of more inclined to like, as opposed to the other stuff which is just crazy and weird, for me anyway. But you appreciate the work people put in, and this really made me see that. That good hearted person, like most of them start off, some of them don't always end that way. You just feel the pressure of it all. And some people it's not always straightforward, you know, they turn to alcohol or drugs. Um, it's such a common thing. Even with all the success in their own lives, they can be falling apart. Um, they, they're normal people, you know, and every, a lot of people will have their own problems at home and then just go to a job every day and not even talk about it and act like everything's fine. Um, and just somehow go through the day without thinking about it. Or, somehow just block it out and then go home. That's, you know, it's flipping a switch, putting on a mask, but not everyone can do that. And famous people, with the amount of attention they have, have a, even if it's good attention, it's still too much to take sometimes. And we've seen it too often, especially in the, in the rap game, these young rappers and hip hop artists, just resorting to all that just because of the anxiety they feel and the fear of being judged when it's not about that really. I mean, I can't remember the exact quote that Lady Gaga said at the uh, the Oscars. It was something really inspirational based around like, how, you know, trying hard, let me find it actually. Like about, like no matter what you do, it's like the, it's the journey kind of. The journey or like, um, the work, you know, the work you put in. It's not about winning or losing about the journey. And finally I typed in my passcode on my phone, right? Right, where am I, where am I going? So my, my cousin put this quote on, on Instagram the other day, and I was just like taken back, I was like, where'd you get that? And funny enough, I was talking about, at that moment we were talking about the Lady Gaga movie, because she was like, have you seen that? I was like, no, nah, I've been watching this documentary, blah, blah, blah. And then, that, I was on Instagram, I saw her, her quote, and I was like, where did you get this from? This is amazing. Okay, here it is. It's not about winning, it's about... It's about not giving up. If you have a dream, fight for it. Yeah, so... See what I mean? Like, it, it's not always about winning. It's about, yeah, not giving up in some sense. 
She says, yeah, if you have a dream, fight for it, of course. Because nobody's going to give it to you. If it's a dream, it's not always going to be conventional to everyone else. Like I say, what? Like going back to Dre, you know, it wasn't always the normal route to take. The way, the way he did it in music, the DJing and stuff. You know, but, um, and people around you might not appreciate it till later on. And they might not see that it, the way you do, because some people, they haven't achieved their own dreams, so they're trying to dampen yours just because they don't want to see you succeed over them, because it might make them feel worse about their own failures. Some people do see it and just well, and go for it. And, you know, like when you see another person with a dream, they respect that. Maybe it's not something they're necessarily interested in, but they respect the ambition, the willingness to go for it, to just fight for it, because you're not going to get it easy. I mean, it's easy to go out and get a normal job and work that job till the day you die, and that's it. It's easy to do that. It's harder to pursue a dream where you might not be financially satisfied. Not, sa I mean, you might not make a lot of money, but you'll be happy. You've got to draw a line as well because if you're good at something, never do it for free. Like the Joker says in Batman, and it works for life. Like if you're good at something, don't do it for free. I'm good at talking. I'm making content out of it. And hopefully one day I won't be doing it for free. Um, but a dream is not is not mo motivation to make money. That's not the motivation of any dream, or shouldn't be. Some people just dream to be rich, but you know that's pretty basic, really, isn't it? You know, you, you've got to be living the dream. You've got to be doing something every day that fulfills you. And not not everyone has the choice, and we have to make sacrifices and maybe get a job that you don't like and you hate and you're there every day saying I hate this job, screw my manager, screw the boss, whatever I want to get out of this, I hate this but at the end of the day you're getting that paycheck and sometimes money does buy you it does buy you happiness to a certain extent like if you if you're broke you know all the money you make will buy, buy things that you need to live off if you haven't got that much money you know every cent counts so money can make a difference to people like that but then again if you've got an abundance of it you become selfish not always not always but you become possessive of it and material things that don't even matter when other people are struggling for simple things so for, for people like that money is important you know they say money's not the key to everything but you know, when you when you you're broke, it is the key to survival in some ways, to making each day count. Like to making you you know when you do shopping, you you got only so much money you can spend, and you got a budget, you know. Um, so yeah, money. You know, obviously your dreams are different. Your dreams shouldn't be money orientated. They can be if you want. Fine. Everyone wants dreams of winning the lottery. But you're still going to need something to do every day to fulfill you. Some people just literally money, that they'll be counting the money, and that's fine. But when it go, going back to music again, these artists, they start with the passion from when they were a young age, from a young age, to be a musician, to be in the industry in some way. Maybe not, maybe they don't know from the beginning what they're going to do. They have no idea, you know, maybe they're not academic, but they've still got a dream and they've got the willingness to put in the work to get there. Because no one that has a lot of followers on Instagrams or social media in general got there overnight, and no, you know, got some form of knowledge or intelligence or skill—not necessarily skill, but intelligence to get there, to to get that far. Even if it doesn't always show, like in what they do, like some YouTubers acting really stupid and crazy and mad on camera, but behind the scenes, their business minded and they've got a business ethic, work ethic, to make more money, to achieve their dreams. But if, you know, not necessarily money, but to do what they want to do in their lives, like from a creative standpoint anyway. And if you're a billionaire and you want to go out and buy a Lamborghini, that's a dream. Yeah, kids, 
dream of having a nice car but the, forget the work you put in when you're a kid the first time you see a sports car Ferrari Lamborghini anything like that just wow like I could have that one day what do I need to do sign me up no you just go crazy you're just in awe of it but you, you don't when you're a kid you not you don't care about the money you just that item you know that thing to you know you have to work towards it you know if you think in your head okay I want to make enough money to buy a Ferrari one day the dream is the Ferrari not necessarily the money it's, it's the well like I said you don't want to be living off material things it's like the only satisfaction but you know I mean as a kid it's like you're in awe of something like that and you dream one day to, to have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini you know and like it's these boyhood like childhood dreams that you'll grow up with and then hopefully you still have them like like Lady Gaga said you got to fight for it um, and yeah it's not winning isn't everything because you might come second you might come last but if you lose from whatever it is you're going to learn from that more than winning so you can never lose really if when you lose you learn and when you win you also learn and you win <laughs> um, there's people who spend years not succeeding and then they do overnight or but not overnight you know what I mean like they've spent years not getting it right till they got it right and eventually they've learned what not to do in some ways and the more videos I've made the more I've realised what's good and what's not what kind of length a vlog should be um, podcast is more random like the other week I planned it more this week I didn't I'm just talking literally um, but there is some sort of structure an idea what I t want to talk about like when I do a vlog I'll be thinking about it before like when I'm eating lunch what am I going to say what am I going to focus on but as a person I'm positive anyway so I know positivity is around that and bettering yourself as a human being and at some point I'm always bringing up my past what I've been through like in relation to Parachute Football or uni or school or my own life like the da daily stuff that the good and the bad <laughs> in some ways I said I'm quite positive anyway so I'm not going to sit here moaning because it's easy it's easy to moan like and people better off than me I see it all the time and I'm just laughing to myself like you, you don't know what difficult is mate um, you know do your legs work for example you know what I mean something as simple as that that people take for granted like oh I'm tired I've got to walk well, well you know who cares so then I'm just mugging people off like driving around just like I don't get tired literally like people walking like oh I'm knackered and not me it's got, got to ride with the punches <laughs> I just take the mick that's my, my way just I'm never serious literally and not everyone <laughs> appreciates it you know what I mean um, and then like everyone's different at the same time so people perceive it differently like it's just my way of coping I guess I'm not a famous person not a musician but we all have the daily stuff we deal with and like the thoughts of can we doing better going through our head or what should we be doing what shouldn't we be doing you know like I can't watch anything on Netflix for an hour and not feel guilty in that time that I'm wasting that time but you need your rest, you can't always be grind, grinding and be working all the time uh, sorry I can't say that word grinding because it's got a, a, another undertone, another meaning to it you can't keep working every day you need a break basically that's what I'm trying to say like you've got to work for that dream but you've got to be willing to take a rest in between don't kill yourself for that dream, I mean you've got to be willing to fight for it, to bleed for it but don't die ever, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, like, I, I find a lot of times I'm just spending too much time editing all day. When it's a nice day, I could be outside, could be making another video, could be just chilling, just reading a book. I always listen to music anyway, so that's just a given. But I've, I'm looking, I've got so many books I haven't read. That's another thing that gets me, like, I, should be re I could be doing something more constructive and because you only got one life you know so I'm going to make the most of every day like Casey Neistat I think always says it like don't go to bed on any day thinking 
well, I could have done that, I should have done that. Well, I wish I did more, you know. Don't have regrets, really. I don't know if you said that exactly, but, you know, the, the mentality I'm trying to get at. And put family first, friends. Be willing to take that time. But like I said, there's, there's people that are better off than me physically, and then they're still moaning about little things that don't even matter. You know, like, oh, I'm not making enough money at the moment. Um, blah, 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 spent on money on this and this. Got no money. Uh, it's all about money. But you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, little things. And I'm like, just look at me. Like, stop moaning. Get, you know, get with the program. <laughs> um, I mean, there's things that people blow out of proportion all the time. I probably exaggerate things as well. Like, things that don't need exaggerating, but that's just me being quite a particular person in general. But I think, but just be yourself. You've got no other way of being. Like, from the beginning, other, like, especially in, when you're in the public eye, like these musicians, Lady Gaga, for example, like, people assumed she was going to always dress in that same way and be that same crazy person, but no. People change with time. And... You notice it with musicians, like, for a few years they might be performing a certain way and act a certain way, and then they suddenly change, flip a switch and be, and then they're, they're, they're like dressing normally, people are like, why are you dressing like that? Like, Lady Gaga's case, like, compared to what she used to wear, and the way she used to sing, they'll just not accept it. And people, you see people lose everything as a result, musicians, people like that. And all that fame, I mean, it, as big as they are, successful as they are, in their own life they've still got issues. Um, but then sometimes you think, like, there's bigger issues. You know, be, a lot of them are saying, be who you are, when they've struggled with it themselves in the past. It's not like they've, they're perfect specimens, you know. Anyone that's telling you, educating you on something, they're bound to have had experience in that. You know, anyone, all of us, in some ways, there's things we've learned from that you know that we did in our past that we try and help others not make the same mistake and you hear you hear that like, when you're my age you're going to get anyone older than you telling you what's what like what you can dream what you can't in some ways the older people get <laughs> the more worry they have in some ways more, a bit more fear sometimes I don't know. Some, not everyone that like, when you get older you might be like screw it I'm playing golf you know, that kind of, I'm going to the casino. I'm like, <laughs> but, um, no. Nah. And then some old, older people might be, like my grandparents or something, they're fearful of everything, of everything. Like, if we go on an hour's drive somewhere, they're like, oh, it's a long way. Sure, you want to go? You know, when I go to Nottingham, like, oh, that's a bit of a long way. When are you going to eat? And when are you going to do? And this and that. <laughs> like, when my brother goes away for work, for ex example, he's in Cardiff at the moment, and Bristol. My grandma's like, what's he gonna eat there? Um, where's he gonna stay? Is he gonna be all right? It's a long way. Are you sure? Why did they make him do that? It's a job, grandma, get over it. Get over it, like, everyone's got their job. Do you know what I mean? So, people change. I've, lo I've lost track, I'm talking about old people now. But yeah, when you're younger, you have, there's a bit more fearlessness involved. Sometimes because you haven't, been in such a bad situation to have learned from um, and sometimes you just think you get older and you think screw it um, I don't care what people think of me you shouldn't ever care really as such you know if, I mean if you want to run naked down the street then don't do that because you're obviously going to get judged but if you want to do that do that and then get arrested fine no, well, no. do you know what I mean there's, there's a limit but I'm saying be yourself don't dress the way you think like people want you to dress or the way you see someone famous dress. As long as you're comfortable when you're being yourself, that's fine. I've seen a lot of artists, they don't want you to be them or copy them or be another version of them, they want you to be yourself. And then, you know, go your own way, don't pave your own path. Don't um, follow others, like trying to duplicate something because it will never be as good as the original. There's people that try to make videos like Casey Neistat, but they're never Casey Neistat videos, because they're not. 
no matter how replica they are, how copied to the detail they are. Like my, you know, I don't. Ba I base my vlogs on the variety, and it changes. I have phases. It will go from like being a bit, bit Joe Sug like kind of vlog, to more Casey, based, more cinematic. But sometimes just vlogging just literally your face in front of a camera all day. Some people watch it because you're that you're that entertaining. Sometimes you feel you have. I feel I have to do more, like be out and about. Tottenham tour, Tottenham stadium tour, whatever, things like that. Um, and it works, but sometimes you just just need something to talk to, some one uh, people. Yeah, it's a lens, but I feel like it's all. Of, but it, I know it's all of you guys. It's just a lens I'm talking to, going crazy. Well, I'm I'm used to it now, and then I just get on with it. Some people say they're camera shy. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, but like, even being filmed by someone else, I feel a bit weird, I don't know, but filming myself, I'm fine. I'm, I'm like, I'm, what I'm scared of, or what I would never do is get up in front of, like, more than a certain amount of people and talk. I just can't, I can't do that. I can never master that. It's not my area. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but, um, no, I mean, if it's a group, small group of people, it's fine. But um, on the stage in front of people, no. Just not my f well, you know, not my thing. So I could I could never be a singer for that reason. I'm not not good at singing. I'm not saying I am. I'm terrible. My brother tells me all the time because you'll be listening to the song, whatever song it is, and you'll be singing along. But then when you hear it back, you're not singing. You're just saying certain words from that song, <laughs> and it just sounds like gibberish, really. But for other people to hear, it's just not pleasant. So if you can't sing, don't attempt it. If you think you can't, well, try. But do seek a second opinion. Uh, you know, the, there's a line we we got to draw. We got to say, "Am I good enough to do this?" To some extent. I mean, you got to be willing to put the work in, whatever it is. If you're a bad singer, but you love music, there's other ways into the industry. You could be a producer. Why not? I love movies too. I could be a movie critic. I reckon. But critics seem to be despised quite a lot but I'm quite critical anyway as a person in particular so I could do that I could pick apart a movie but then there'll be some actors I just don't like or some directors I just don't like and I just won't won't like any of their work <laughs> no matter what and, and um, yeah the, the idea of a good film has changed and people are calling these these Marvel films really good but the, are they? I, I, I could be so critical of Marvel films. I'm a Marvel fan. I've got a poster at the back of my room behind me right now. But um, still, they're just so cheesy sometimes. Superhero movies in general. just. But I love them. I, don't get me wrong, I love them. Sometimes a good, a good like, movie that makes you cringe is funny. But not necessarily good. The fine good like, is subjective. The Room is a great movie, but it's terribly made. But it's a great, it's a great movie. You know, if you know that story, that's just you know what I mean. But like, it's not like a film critic wouldn't give it any rating, but it is a good movie. It's not. I mean, it's not well made. It's terrible in that sense. It makes me cringe. But that's what I enjoy about it. And I know so many people that feel the same way. Like you couldn't try to replicate that to replicate such a badly made film because films have so many people involved now, such a big scale, so much money. So, you know, that a film couldn't be deliberately made bad in that way ever again. It's impossible. Like, I don't think they knew how bad it was. I think maybe they did, but just not Tommy Wiseau. I mean, The Room, it's just, it's quite a cult film, isn't it? And that's just one of the most famous films for being so bad. <laughs> so, take that and, you know, you can make success out of a flop. A flop can be a success. You know, a parody song can be more popular than the original sometimes, and it can be viral. Anything. Well, the in, well, the, there's nothing really. Things don't go viral anymore as such, as they used to. But I, d I don't know. I don't know why, but um, you know. 
yeah, don't don't attempt to make a terrible film because you have a widow you won't. <laughs> Otherwise, it's up to the people to watch whether you're making whatever content. Yeah, um, and when I make these videos, I don't really think about like what's good what's bad it's like all the time like some things I just leave in because even if it's cringe I don't care because I'll be making someone laugh it's probably been in the same boat I just I just um now this year is different for the vlog first of all numbering them makes a big difference so you keep on track of which one's which but when I the way I label my vlogs is just terrible on my computer here it's just like vlog 20, vlog 25, vlog tw 21, whatever. I just number them literally. So I get, when I look back at them, I don't know which one's which. Because I, I should really use the title that I use in the actual video on YouTube, in each video on YouTube. Put that title in my, in for each folder, but I don't. So I just get, mi but, um, get mixed up all the time. But I, I'm always using bits from older intros and always altering the intro and the outro bit of the vlog it's just a particular particular thing that I always do I don't know why I, I don't even need that you can just I can just put Louise 21 and start the vlog and that's it but I feel the need to do more and I get satisfaction out of doing more and adding a bit of music here and there a little intro just to draw you guys in I don't know if it works or Maybe it does. Maybe it don't. Um, but thank you to Wave 83 of you. Yeah, 83. And like I said it many times, I know most of you. So thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just. I'm well known for these vlogs now. Like most of my dad's clients, they, they've watched me on there. So thank you if you're watching, if you, if you go to Vito's Hair and Beauty. And yes, there's just more and more of you every day. And as I was at, I was, you know, there was a time when I was at like 15, 20, I just couldn't see how I was going to get any more. No, actually, I tell a lie, I was more ambitious. I was already saying I'd get to 100 within a few months and a year and all that. But when I do, there'll be a big party, trust me. Because the more you get, the easier it is after that. And an example of a YouTuber just kept on pushing and kept on on until he made it. Probably Mr. Beast. I don't know if you heard of him, he's only 20. Making videos for like years. But he only really got famous the last three or four years. Maybe less than that. And he's been like donating money and stuff. The videos where he just gives people money. A lot of money randomly. Like homeless people and stuff, like 10 grand. Or more to record their reaction and because he's a genuine nice guy and recently he was on Casey Neistat's vlog and they were, they were discussing like he was discussing his career and how he got to where he did he was literally making videos every day no matter what committing to it and he sacrificed a lot of his teenage years to do that just doing random things like he counted to like a million is it a million? he, he counted to like a million or something in, in a video it's just a video of him counting. Like, crazy. And people do watch this stuff. And he, he went viral a few times, this sort of thing. And of course, recently, he's been famous for the, you know, putting up all those billboards for people to subscribe to PewDiePie. Um, when that was a big craze, he was literally trying to help him out. Because he's a huge fan of PewDiePie. And he literally wants to be like him. But I think it's, impossible to be well he can be like him you can't make videos his videos are different as it is but he did start in gaming as well but now he, he's his own person and as much as he says he wants to be like PewDiePie you know just make simple videos every day and make people laugh and stuff he's, he is his own man and respect for that I mean you can idolize someone and want to achieve like they achieve but you got to do it in your own way and he's doing that and for someone to Casey for Casey to notice him, that must be a really proud moment because he, he did say he's a big fan of his too. I mean, you know, they say don't meet your idols, but sometimes it gives you a, a look into the future, like how successful you can be. 
you know and then when you get to that stage you'll be looking at someone else in that same way like from the opposite point of view like they're idolizing you but you idolize them too from a different even if someone's younger than you and he said where did the video like where will you be a few years from now he was like doing oh. no he didn't say he was doing youtube he, he like hugely underestimated where he would be within three or four years it's like doing a video where he's speaking to a future version of himself and he really underestimated where he would be um, but he just committed and I don't, don't think he realises the work he's put in like he clearly does but um, didn't, he didn't realise that he would get this famous or this big this quickly anyway I think in a long time of not being known to anyone having a small amount of subs and then just going from there it's amazing it's even for me like I'm I'm older than this kid but I'm looking up to him because he's been making YouTube videos way before me um, before it was cool let's just say now it's a bit more typical in it but um, there's people I know that make YouTube here and there but not on the scale I do like not on the the num not on the amount I do the amount of videos I do like I've lost count of how many actual videos are made it's in the 500 mark see what I mean so you don't get this overnight and it's still going you know but when I was at like 15 20 I'd be almost ashamed to say to people they'd be like how many you got oh yeah 20 or 15 um you know and politely the people say okay that's good good start take it's not easy you'll get there and I kept telling myself that too and here I am um, 83 subs that is I'm not 83 <laughs> look good for 83 don't I no it's the the subscriptions yeah, 83 of them hundreds soon enough trust me can't wait for that day I should probably just do a video talking to my future self as well it's a really great idea to be honest I mean that's what these vlogs are for like I'm always talking about where I'll be and what I've done to get here so looking back at these a year from now like I look at last year's I'm like wow I remember that moment I remember how I felt and it motivates me like it makes me when I say it could be worse or it has been in the past and some vloggers just feel like I just wish I never made but you got to keep them you got to keep going a few vlogs I've deleted over the years um, some I just changed up um, but that's it I mean you've got to be not afraid of mistakes even like if I make a bad vlog fine I move on I learn from it um, I am very particular when ed editing too like if I don't think something's right I will change it up and I do spend a l probably too long on the intros thinking of the right the right visuals and the right music for the intros when I you know when I roll the intro which is getting really annoying to say I just keep keep keeps coming out <laughs> roll the intro I said it at the beginning of this it's just so cheesy isn't it but I don't care it just states the obvious but sometimes you've got to do that um, but the podcast is different it's like more random chill discussion for the the vlog I, I well every now and then I, I'm using more energy to explain what I'm what I'm doing what's going on I'm not on the Jake Paul level of like good morning and all that I don't go crazy because you got to be yourself again some youtubers you know act crazy some a bit more calm you know a bit more chilled Mr Beast for example is a bit more chilled compared to Jake Paul or Logan Paul Casey's Casey, Casey's quite quite buzzing when he does his <laughs> it's like he's had eight Red Bulls and a few coffees I don't know that's what I mean some people just amplify they amplify who they are on the videos I don't know I don't know if I'm more funny on the videos or real life probably real life I swear a bit more to a lot more I mean it's weird like when I'm around like public I don't really swear it's more at home but every now and then we'll just lose my shit with my brother and just go we'll be arguing it'll be in a public place we don't even care or in the garden everyone can hear us you know what I mean like again I accidentally posted an Instagram picture with him in it he's like why didn't you crop me out of it the picture you crop me out and then many 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 exchanges of words nice words 
really nice words passed between us and yeah that, that was uh, before I went to the match Saturday actually it's quite fun I was winding him up really but I, I didn't intend to put his face in the video in the picture yeah he didn't like his face from four or five years ago he was all chubby and cute and fat so yeah he didn't want that picture so I don't look good in that well he didn't say that but I don't know it's like he's in the CIA because it's like it's really private about his social media stuff never ever post on Facebook he's on it just looking at everyone else's stuff don't trust anyone like that I tell you what don't trust people that don't post anything and they're not out forth outright with anything they say they don't just come out and say it sometimes it's better to be you know they just hold your tongue but he's like never like saying anything or posting anything I don't know he's like trying to act cool to all these girls like part of the mystery is part of the, I don't know it acts all mysterious does it help I don't know just gotta be just be honest I'm too honest and blunt in a different way to his to the way he is he's very secretive very like no they can't know nothing about me nothing like chill out no I don't no we, we get on really a lot of people say we get on really well and I'm like you haven't seen us at home but everyone says that you know every sibling but yeah it's fun it's better than being a lonely child or maybe not well lonely childs get more lonely kids that are, when there's one of you you get more of everything when there's two or three or four or however many you've got to share everything hand me downs here and there you know you've got to set an example for your younger siblings which I don't do very well well we're both a bit crazy in our own ways we're Italian what do you want you know it's part of the culture just be a bit crazy a bit unhinged someone rubs you the wrong way um, I mean playing patch of football you know you you got a ref involved so you've got to be careful what you say or do you know with this lately we've been using speakers on like headsets and with speakers on our chairs um, just to be heard extra clear by each other so that is a speaker so like if I decide to swear everyone in, in the ground in in the hall is going to hear it I'm going to get angry on the pitch not that I do I get kind of get angry and then try and use channel that anger if you know what I mean to play better onto the pitch not in a violent way <laughs> towards the ref or other players and it normally works I haven't hit another player <coughs> jeez my voice just just every now and then goes and comes back but yeah I've never got that aggressive I get aggressive but like not do you know what I mean not violent aggressive luckily um, but yeah just got to keep your head when it comes to any sport as well you see players lose it all the time I mean more so with the ref but no, I haven't really gone that crazy on the pitch. Never really been booked either. But I have been booked once when I kind of swore at one of my teammates to get out of the way. Because he was like in the way and it was like, gave away a free kick or something. I just went mad for a moment and I got over it. Just to see red for a few seconds. And then I'm fine. Um, <laughs> it's nature of any sport, I think. That kind of sport anyway, where there's a ref involved. Just gotta keep your head. <laughs> like when I'm making these videos, I kind of I'm seeing the end goal. I'm seeing when I'm uploading and when it's published, the feedback after. And so I just go ahead and edit really, qu not quickly, but I just do it all in one go. I don't take a break, and I should. And I was saying earlier, you need to take a break. Yeah, you got this mission, you got this dream of success and where you want to be, but you gotta take a break in between and just savor each moment just you know I'm always feeling guilty when I'm taking a break or when I'm just not not making a video not working but I shouldn't because this brain's always working I'm telling you I'm always thinking of ideas as I'm doing something else and every now and then it's, it, it I don't know it gets a bit it gets a bit annoying just to always, the brain always be working but that's me I guess I never stop <laughs> um and yeah, bit, haven't been to uni and gone through all that. I was like, no. 
no more studying for me. I'm not doing the masters. People that I know have, you know, I see friends of mine who have done that or started families or work or moved out and things like that, and it's great to see. Um, you know, because people my age, a lot of people doubt us. Oh no, you can't ever do that. In my day, this and that. Fun. What well, was fun? You know, some people like exaggerating. Like we never had fun in our day. Leisure time. What is that? You know what I mean? Fun. They, they, they exaggerate. In my day, blah blah blah. We had to work. Blah blah blah. It's different now. Um, I'm just taking a mick out of all the, all, you know, my grandparents and all that. That's the way they are. Like, oh, in my day, get over it. <laughs> Times change. There's different ways that people achieve success. Different views as to what is success and what is achieving what is achieving your dream. Everyone has different dreams, but like, like again, like Lady Gaga said, you got to fight for it. It's not going to come easy easier to just go out and get a basic job like it's easy to just go and get a job at McDonald's there's no work to get in there I mean once you're there you're there you know what I mean like is that does anyone dream to, to do that but you have to make sacrifices and there's a point where you will be doing a job you don't like like I've said in the past I said earlier just have to like see past that see what you will be doing 10 years from now or, or you know, take control and change that yourself. From the beginning, like when I went to, originally I didn't really want to go to uni and I went to uni, but I still didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, I want to be a journalist because I'm studying journalism. But do I really want to write in a newspaper? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> My way in was radio and through that I've developed this podcast and the vlog. You know, but when I was at uni, I didn't even know what I was doing. What was I going to? I didn't think about YouTube. When I was at uni, I wasn't really watching many vloggers like I do now. A few here and there, but it was really like once I'd finished uni, that I really was on YouTube more because I had nothing else to do. And I was searching for jobs. Did a fair few voluntary jobs here and there. Some I liked, some I didn't. Some made me realise what I didn't want to do. What I didn't want to do is ever work in an office in a closed space with other people I don't like um, but technically this is, this is my office but it's my own space my own creative space a normal office is too one dimensional you know too robotic but when you're creative there's nothing robotic about it it's just like painting on, on the canvas it's random you can do whatever and then you can still charge loads of money and sell it as art whatever it is on the page even if it doesn't look like anything or doesn't resemble anything it's still a painting it's still something you've created and some people might not like it some people will everyone will see it differently like some paintings people see one thing and people see something else it's like a trick of the mind I guess and you know what I mean it might symbolise something to someone someone else it might not like my videos to so some of you, you might resonate with some of it and some of you might just hate it all well, then you're a hater, you're not really a fan are you? but regardless I'm still making the videos still still making the podcast um, and it's as fun as day one um, I mean you just gotta dive in like I did hesitate a bit before starting YouTube and I did my research, looked at other vloggers and YouTubers and really thought about it but just technically dove in dove in and just did it and the first vlog was it was weird <laughs> it, I was nervous, well once I got behind the camera I wasn't so nervous um, because it was just me talking to a camera really but in public I learned that it was more difficult to keep focus and like because you always, I, I'm quite you know, you've got to be aware of what's around you in public, especially me driving at the same time you know, and I got around that and the, the podcast has been is a newer part to the channel but nonetheless I did my research too and kind of went for it I've got the equi some of the equipment not the most expensive equipment but 
to get me by because you, you don't need you can do a vlog with with a normal iPhone. You know, there'll be people like, oh, I can't afford it. I need I need all this equipment. No, you don't. You've got an iPhone. You've got a camera. You know, use it. Um, I have vlogged on the camera on the phone. I haven't in the past anyway. But it's always been the GoPro, the go-to camera, and the DSLR later on, like over the summer and stuff. Um, but the GoPro is my my go-to camera, and I have ordered the second GoPro, and you'll see that soon. It's a GoPro Hero Five. It's got a little screen on the back, so I can just see what I'm filming. But I won't be getting rid of the old GoPro. I'll still be using it. And do you remember when I used to attach the GoPro to the footrest of my chair for when I was driving? To the park and stuff, and out and about. I'll be doing that again with the older, with the my original GoPro and the new one. I'll be using to vlog at the same time. So you'll see that in the vlog pretty soon. Um, just so you know, I don't hide nothing from you guys. Um, but yeah, it's been a podcast of me just talking about me basically. Um, but yeah, work to your dreams. Um, work every, every single day to achieve them don't forget to take a break in between though and take your own time to reflect on what you've done so far and just just zone out for a bit just flip a switch and chill out don't worry about all the things that you're dreaming of and all your dreams and stuff you know and use each day to your best like you know don't waste a day and if I'm not making a video, I'm thinking of new videos and what to do next and what to do in the next podcast and or I'm uploading something t re related to the channel on Instagram, on my Instagram Louisi21 official for the for the anything related to the channel you know, I'm trying to do that on a daily basis keep my viewers interested, keep you guys knowing what's going on on the channel through the Instagram as well as in my videos and stuff and on the podcasts and the podcast where I really just let go and talk and that's what it's for and it's educational for me and I hope for you too more, more for you guys than me I mean I'm because I'm loving what I'm doing but hopefully you, you guys are learning from it in some way or just being entertained in some way um, yeah I am uploading some of them on Facebook because I've got some relatives who are just too lazy to go on YouTube. One of my cousins, bear in mind, <laughs> she's like, oh, can you upload them to Instagram? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, well, if I knew how to upload to Instagram, I would. A video, well, I, why? I want to get views on YouTube. So I uploaded it to Facebook anyway, just for her. So, yeah. <laughs> If you're on my Facebook, you'll see it there too. But just watch it on the YouTube just to get my views up, please. Please. <laughs> I don't know. Is this the end of the vlog? It's not a vlog, is it? There you go. I'm, I'm not learning from that mistake. Still saying vlog on the podcast. Podcast 11, guys. Louise 21. I've been your host, as always. Keep it real. Keep working towards your dreams. Don't forget them. Don't give in and get an easy job. Just keep going. That's it. Stay positive. Keep a good PMA. And that's it, really. That's all i got to say. That is it. Guys, take it easy. I'll see you on the next upload. Probably a vlog. And, I, of course, I'll see you on the next podcast as well. But take it easy, guys, and I'll see you real soon. And three, two, one.